The Emir of the State of Kuwait begins his two-day state visit to the Sultanate of Oman. Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophie of Sweden attend a symposium in Stockholm. The hereditary Grand Ducal couple of Luxembourg visit Germany. And Queen Letizia of Spain attends the opening of Dia de Internet Segura in Madrid. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. In Madrid, Her Majesty Queen Letizia of Spain presided over the inauguration of Dia de Internet Segura 2024 held at the Real Casino de Madrid. The theme of this year's international event is Juntos por un Mejor Internet. Organized by the Nacional de Ciberseguridad de España, INCIBE, and In Hope Networks of Internet Safety Centers in Europe, with the support of the European Commission, the annual international event aims to promote the safe and positive use of technology, especially among children and young people. Quote, millions of people around the world are coming together to inspire positive change online, raise awareness about security issues, and participate in events and activities. End quote. During today's event, the Queen watched a video presentation about cybersecurity issues among young people, as well as attended a roundtable discussion entitled, How to Safely Navigate the Internet. Meanwhile, Her Majesty, Emerita Queen Sofia Spain, chaired the annual meeting of the highest governing body of the Escuela Superior de Musica Reina Sofia in Madrid. According to the Royal Court of Spain, the school works to support the most talented young people in their personal and artistic development and bring the best music to all audiences. In Windsor, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, presided over an investiture ceremony at Windsor Castle. Meanwhile, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom left Buckingham Palace in London this afternoon via helicopter to the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk. Earlier, according to Sky News, the King held a, quote, 45-minute meeting with his son, the Duke of Sussex, at Clarence House, end quote. And please don't yell at me because I mentioned the Duke of Sussex. Thank you. In Monacoville, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, sent a cable to His Majesty, King Charles III of the United Kingdom, this morning. Quote, Your Majesty, in these difficult times, my family would like to express to you our full support. Your determination, courage, and openness have always been a source of inspiration. I am convinced that you will show the same bravery throughout this challenge. My family and the people of Monaco join me in sending you the royal family, and your loved ones, our warmest thoughts and prayers. Signed, Albert, Prince of Monaco. End quote. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, held an audience with economist Professor Jean Tirol and the President of the Central Bank of Luxembourg, Mr. Gaston Renesh, at the Palais Grand Ducal. Professor Tirol is an economist, researcher, and professor at the Toulouse School of Economics. In 2014, Professor Tirol received the Nobel Prize for Economics. During the meeting, the discussion covered a range of topics, including national and international economic news, as well as the challenge of developing a climate-friendly economy. On Monday, their Royal Highnesses, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume and Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg, met visual artist and sculptor Mr. Pitt Brandenburger in his art studio in Germany. According to the Kroll Grand Ducal, Mr. Brandenburger shared his fascination with nature, passed on by his father during his childhood, which has since manifested itself through artistic expression. Quote, Preferring to work with oak, walnut, cherry, and maple, among other things, combined with cast iron or bronze, Mr. Brandenburger fills exhibition spaces with a cohort of submissive guards, kinds of anthropomorphic tabernacles sheltering within their symbolic objects, precious and vibrant stones, like souls. 
His superb works resonate as an invitation to contemplation and introspection. Mysticism and esotericism enter into symbosis in the production which tends to lift the veil on the mysteries of life and creation. Certainly, the sculptures challenge us with their aesthetics, but to penetrate the artist's universe, you have to grasp the symbolic nature of his work. Each tree is chosen according to its symbolic meaning, especially Celtic mythology. Oak, for example, has evoked strength and sovereignty since antiquity, while walnut is a symbol of regeneration and energy. End quote. Okay, that's cool. In Brussels, Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians, as an advocate of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, visited the Good Planet Belgium on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. Good Planet Belgium is a nonprofit organization that aims to inspire individuals, young and old, to work towards a sustainable society. Quote, through our projects, campaigns, and workshops, we spread knowledge and plant seeds for change. We make the ideas behind sustainable development concrete, feasible, and attractive, always with a positive outlook and a hopeful approach. Every year, our 100 employees and dozens of volunteers inspire and activate more than 500,000 children, young people, and adults throughout Belgium. End quote. Companies are also encouraged to integrate sustainability objects into their business strategy. During today's visit, the Queen participated in several workshops with primary school students including a workshop aimed at raising awareness of the causes and solutions to the waste problems in the world. In the Good Cook workshop, the Queen and the students prepared dishes based on seasonal vegetables. The Queen also visited the Intergenerational Garden Workshop, where, quote, seniors and young people spend time together in the greenery and build friendships beyond the age difference, end quote. In Ghent, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians visited the Due Center for Entrepreneurship at Ghent University. According to a press release, the Due Center for Entrepreneurship is the first point of contact for Ghent University students who are, quote, thinking of starting an entrepreneurial journey. The goal of Due is to inform all students and researchers correctly about the advantages and disadvantages of a career as an entrepreneur and to help them gain as many entrepreneurial competencies as possible. We also want to help the official student entrepreneurs in the best way possible and support them in the development of their businesses." End quote. During today's visit, the King met with students who had just started their businesses, thanks to the support of the center, including the company Planet B, which designs eco-responsible care products and cosmetics, as well as the company Rebin, which equips public trash cans with sensors for intelligent waste management. And finally, Gutsy, a company that makes insect-based dog food. In Stockholm, their royal highnesses, Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia of Sweden, attended a symposium entitled Control Plus Rights for Increased Safety on the Net, held at the Space Cultural Center. Meanwhile, His Majesty King Carl Gustav of Sweden, as chairman, and Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, presided over a Foreign Affairs Committee meeting at the Royal Palace. According to the Royal Court of Sweden, the Foreign Affairs Committee is a consultative body between the Parliament and the government. The committee consists of the Speaker, nine other members of the Parliament, and nine deputies. The Foreign Affairs Committee meets at the invitation of the government. The Swedish Constitution notes that the government must continuously keep the Foreign Affairs Committee informed of the, quote, foreign policy conditions that may have significance for the kingdom and consult with the committee about these as often as necessary, end quote. His Highness Sheikh Michal al-Ahmed al-Jaber al-Sabah, the emir of the state of Kuwait, arrived in Muscat this afternoon to begin his two-day state visit to the Sultanate of Oman. Upon his arrival at the Royal Private Airport in Muscat, the emir was warmly welcomed by His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq al Said of Oman. After the official welcoming ceremony, the emir and the sultan arrived at Al-Alam Palace 
where they exchanged gifts, decorations, and orders. His Majesty the Sultan conferred the Order of Al Sayyid and a traditional Omani dagger to the Emir, while the Emir conferred the Order of Mubarak the Great to the Sultan. On Wednesday, the Emir and the Sultan will preside over the inauguration of the Duke Refinery and Petrochemicals Industry. According to a press release from the Royal Court of Oman, the opening of the refinery, quote, culminates the advanced relations, particularly those pertaining to fruitful economic cooperation between the two countries, end quote. And finally, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the 17th King of Malaysia, arrived in Johor Bahru this afternoon for a visit. Upon his arrival at the Johor Royal Hangar, the King was welcomed by his son, His Royal Highness Prince Ismail, the Regent of Johor, and senior officials of the Johor State Government. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim took the oath of office as the 17th King of Malaysia on January 31st in Kuala Lumpur. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Wednesday, February 7th with all the latest world news. Until then, I sincerely wish, and I really do mean it, each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.